Okay, so as always, we're gonna label this so that we have, uh, when we come back, we can easily locate with a heading, analyzing our factors using alpha lens. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to actually um, get pricing, okay, uh, get the prices. Um, but before we do that, we want to make sure that we're not getting the prices for all the stocks because um, the universe here is actually a lot smaller. Uh, so how do I know? So let's just uh, take the um, install all of the so-called assets or the tickers that is uh, being mentioned in the pipeline. Uh, so we're going to take result. We're going to take the index. Remember the foot index here refers to the date as well as the ticker. So we're going to refer to the index, but because this is a uh, multi-index, we're going to refer to just the second level. Well, in this case, one, because Python start counting from zero. So we want to store all of the unique tickers into assets. Okay, and let's look at the length of assets. There's 1620. So that's the point. That's the reason why we don't want to pull out all 8,000 uh, stocks or tickers because we don't need all 8,000 of them. It's just going to waste your memory and slow down the computation. So let's just store our pricing data into the variable called uh, pricing and just get pricing. Um, and the first parameter put in is assets. That's the 1620 assets that we want. We're going to get the start date data, but we're going to start from 2013 01, um, December 01. And, but we're going to end a little bit later. Uh, reason being, uh, we want to give um, the uh, alpha lens a bit of date to see if there's any predictive power going forward or not. And we're going to just pull out the opening price um, rather than the closing price because we're likely going to uh, use the open price to actually close uh, the so-called position itself. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is that we're going to break this into two quantiles, meaning split it into half the top and versus the bottom quantile. Uh, it would be better if we can actually split it into more so-called percentile, maybe 10, you know, 10 so-called percentiles. But for now, uh, until um, the alpha lens has been... Um, uh, so called being pushed to the the new newer version right now we can only uh, conduct uh, on two quantiles so next thing to do is import alpha lens uh, okay and we're gonna run well oh. we're gonna run alpha lens and we're gonna create the tier sheet and create a factor tier sheet, create factor tier sheet. And the factor that we're going to analyze is result sentiment. Okay, which is that one there. Okay, based on this one here. Okay, and the prices is based on pricing that we extract from get pricing. And we want to look at two quantiles and Finally, we want to have a look for a period of 1, 5, 10. If you want to, we can look at 20 days, look forward as well, and just run this. Okay, we have an error message. Uh, periods. Okay, this one might take a wee while to run. Okay, so just have to be a little bit patient as we run this. Typically, the so-called table comes out first, as it is right now. Okay, if you look at the returns analysis, I'm not to worry about the quantiles uh, analysis. I'm more interested in the returns analysis. This is one day look ahead, five day look ahead, 10 days and 20 days look ahead. The annualized alpha for one day look ahead is the largest amongst the four here. It's 5.4% versus 1.9, 1.9 and 1.3. 
which makes sense because sentiment tends to be short term in nature, not long in nature. Um, so that's the one thing that you want to look at. Of course, there are other things that you need to consider, which is the standard deviation, whether that number is significantly larger than zero or not. Um, the good thing is, if you look at beta, uh, the 1, 5, 10 and 20 days are all very, very small. From, it varies from minus 0 0.02 uh, to minus 0 0.03. So it's basically zero, really. Um, of course, you also want to look at the standard deviation of the beta. Okay, let's look at the information analysis itself. Uh, again, this time we're looking at the 1, 5, 10 and 20 days. Now, if you look at the information coefficient for the mean of one day is very small. Uh, 5 is also very small. What we want to look at more importantly is the p-value. Of course, you can look at these statistics, but uh, I'll just use the p-value is fast and I don't have to uh, spend time calculating or look up a table. So if you look at the p-value, let's just say my p-value uh, where I have a decision point is 5%, um, you will see that the one day is significant, five days is not significant, the 10 and 20 days are all very significant. Um, in fact, the 20 days is very significant, but that's not the point. Remember, the use of p-value is if it's less than 5%, then it's significant. So the 1, 10, and 20 days are all equally significant. The good part about these uh, numbers is that the I see the skew is to the positive side. So that's really always a uh, plus side. The ketosis is uh, okay. The annualized um, information ratio is really, really healthy. So if we look at the turnover, okay, it's all right. It's 55% uh, turnover. Okay, so uh, this is what you want to look at. Remember, we are looking at the one day, five day, 10 days, and 20 days. And we're looking at the two quantiles. Uh, do you remember that we, we, we split them into half, the one day, and also the 20 day quantile. Um, if you look at this, the one quantile is mean is quite a lot under zero the one second quantile which is the the one that you want to go long on this is the one that you want to go short on this is the one you're going to go long on uh, is significantly above zero which is always a bonus um, but these seems to be very well insignificantly different from zero so this is the five the ten and the twenty days and if you look at this, the one day is healthy. Uh, over the course of one year period, it generated 5% return. Um, doesn't sound like much, but it's actually, later on, we obviously need to consider the risk factor or the so-called standard deviation that goes with this. We want to look at the sharp ratio. Uh, looking at the one and two, the color uh, here, this is one. Okay, so it's, Going, this is a beautiful chart. What you really want to see is that they're going further and further away from each other. Um, this is the five day. Remember, this is a long short uh, portfolio. You long the upper quantile, you short the lower quantile. Uh, this uh, is not so healthy. Um, the five day is not really that. The cumulative return is not really. You know, it doesn't go up steadily. It fluctuates too much to be of use to us. Ten day is okay. Uh, it's not too bad, but you notice that the actual return is only 1.2, uh, whereby the one day is 5% uh, in comparison. Although, and let's look at the 20 day. The 20 day is also not that significant, it's about 1%. It's really not that um, exciting at all. Uh, other things that you can see here is the mean return of the top minus bottom. There are some periods whereby it dipped below zero. But generally, it's mostly above uh, the five-day. Doesn't move too far away from uh, from the zero, uh, the ten-day too, as well as the twenty-day. What you really want is that this orange line continually, continuously, and uh, consistently stay above zero. That's really what you actually want to see here. These are in basis point, by the way. Um, okay, looking at the information coefficient generally above zero, 
for the one um, this is the one day one period the five period is fluctuates around zero so it's not really that exciting um, the 10 and also 20 is also fluctuate around zero really um, the distribution plot as well as the QQ plot check okay um, not much you can say about here except that there is actually some positive skewness here that's these two points here uh, are makes th this as long as it stay along this red line is normal but these two makes it a little bit not so normal or skewed to the positive side okay looking at the um, monthly mean return so generally green for the one day uh, five days also green 10 day on well, 20 day they're all green well it's pretty good oh there is some negative here that's slightly orange oh in fact there are some negative here the font's just too small for me to read okay so these are the turnover um, so you're looking at almost 50 percent turnover well, on average, it's, it's about 60%. So this is the one thing that you probably have to consider is that how much it does turn over. It seems to be quite a lot. Uh, this may have an impact on the profitability of this um, strategy. If the turnover is too high, it starts chewing into the so-called uh, the, the profit that you generate. And this kind of strategies is probably not going to be suitable for retail investors with 100000 to invest. You probably need somewhere around looking at this maybe 10 maybe 100 million and above uh, easily definitely over a million um, to make this profitable whereby um, you might need a prime broker rather than the retail broker which the fees will actually eat up the amount of turnover that you make okay so the factor rank auto correlation is generally uh, mean of 0.12 is not very high is actually quite low so this is really alpha lens uh, it allows you to actually quickly see whether there is any signal in here uh, from here you can actually you know do a very quick judgment and uh, just looking at the p-value itself okay this is not too bad but this is the one thing that's quite troubling because the ic mean is quite low although the annualized alpha is quite high uh, I think based on this, it means that the standard deviation is rather low uh, for this strategy. So having done all that, what we're going to do um, is to move on to actually uh, conduct uh, back testing in the uh, IDE um, and just basically test this strategy and see how it actually really perform in the uh, so-called um, real world. Okay.